Thank you for joining us today for the virtual Sunday service with the Center for Creative Living. CCL, a charter of the Universal Church of the Master, has served and supported the spiritual needs of its community here in the Bay Area for over 20 years. Good morning. How are you? I am the Reverend Donnie Boone and you have reached the Center for Creative Living. Now, if you haven't been here before, this is a wonderful, wonderful church. We believe that everybody is created equal. Everybody. Just think about that. Because, you know, I woke up this morning and it's been such a long time since I've seen any of you especially the new ones. But for all of the people that have been missing the church, I want to tell you, I have too. I miss hugging you. I miss seeing you. I miss hearing from you. So what I'd like for you to do is get on the chat room and tell me what's going on with you so we can feel a little bit more connected. Because we're going to be talking about belief today. What do you believe? What are your beliefs about life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, and how do you feel about what's going on in the country and in the world? This is a time for you to feel you can say something to be heard by your fellow parishioners, those people that you used to see every week that you haven't seen for three and a half months. Wouldn't it be great? Well, let's just chat. Chat to everybody and let us know how you are doing. I want to thank you so much for joining us this morning. We're still here. We're going to be virtual the whole month of June. But as soon as we get the okay, we're going to be back holding hands. We're going to be back looking at you and having you sing along with our songs. That's going to be fun. But I want you to know that the next voice you hear is going to be the Reverend Dr. Eileen Augustine, leading us in a prayer. But don't despair. I'll be back for the talk. Thanks again, and welcome. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Reverend Dr. Eileen Augustine, and I'm the president of the Universal Church of the Master, and it is a pleasure to be here to share a prayer with you this morning. Prayer is one thing that binds us to Creator, however we envision that being. And it also binds us with people, millions and millions of people all over the world who right now are praying with all their hearts. This is a difficult and challenging time. And prayer does help. It does help shift the energy. And... It is through our faith that while we may not understand what's going on and why it's happening, Creator does. And that when all of this is over, we will be wiser, we will be more compassionate, and we will have learned some valuable lessons about ourselves and our relationships with one another. So while we wait for that information to come, in the meantime, we pray. So take a nice deep breath in and let it out. And as you exhale, just allow all of those things that are weighing on your body, your mind, or your spirit to sort of fall away into that little imaginary basket next to you. That's your care basket. And use it to hold those things that in this place and at this moment, you don't need to hang on to. Dear, blessed and wonderful creator, we thank you for the blessing of this day and we thank you for our lives. We thank you for all the blessings you give in each and every moment and with each and every breath. And we also especially thank you for being with us during this tremendously difficult time. We know that there are many people who have been hurt, many people who are afraid, many people who are angry. But we also know there are people who are stepping up as heroes. That even though this situation 
is based on the worst in humanity. We have seen the brightest and the best. We have seen people with courage who stand up for what they believe in. We have seen those who will stand with their brothers and sisters, regardless of the color of their skin, and say, I am with you. Creator, thank you for that because it helps remind us that you are with us. We know that you are the guiding hand that will lead us out of this dark place. And Creator, we also know that you shower blessings on all of those who have been affected by this act of violence and all of the ones in the past who have. Our ancestors smile upon us because they know that we are showing the courage to move forward. And that I know that they give us their strength. Creator, thank you for all of those who fight for what is right, who fight for the light. All of those who wear uniforms that even though the idea behind that uniform is to protect, to serve, and to be peacekeepers. Some have not held it that way. And Creator, we ask you to change their hearts. We ask you to enter those hardened hearts and those hardened spirits and to be able to bring in your light because we know you can transmute anything, including hate to love. Creator, we pray that their hearts open up to you and that all of the anger be set aside so that we may get to the work of creating a new system and a new way and a new method of dealing with one another, that compassion be what guides us. Creator, thank you for all you give and all you are. We thank you for another day because we know you will always bring that next sunrise along with opportunities for us to be able to grow closer to you and to grow closer to one another. For all you give, thank you. And whatever it means to you, Creator, we hope you have a wonderful day. For all your creation to the next seven generations and beyond, aho matako yasin, ago, 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 by earth, sea, and sky, namaste, shalom, assalamu alaikum, blessed be, amen. Welcome. I told you I'd be back. Here I am. Thank you very much, Dr. Eileen, for that wonderful message. We really do enjoy your prayers. This morning, I'm going to be talking about the difference between believing something and thinking something. There's a difference there. The things we think about are the ones that we have learned through books, through written material, through things that we have acknowledged and have seen. The things that we believe quite often are inherited from our parents and our grandparents by what we see and the way we see them doing things. Just think how, how many of you believed that the stork brought babies? And then weren't you disappointed or surprised when you realized it was a thing called pregnancy? Did you believe in Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny, or the Tooth Fairy. Sorry, if, if you still are, it's perfectly okay. But those beliefs weren't based on actual facts. They were a belief that was given to you. Could have been by your mother, father, even a third grade or kindergartner who either told you what you believed was wrong or also believed the same thing. Well, think about that a minute. Now I say think. What is it you truly know? You know that we are all children of God and we are all loved and appreciated. And that each one of us is equal. That equality is quite often in question. Lots of times we have people feeling they're better than we are or we're thinking we're better than they are. 
And that's what causes prejudice and this discrimination. Thinking and believing. But most of all, it's believing those things that we saw and heard when we were very small. So let's look at it as a way to rethink, to re-acknowledge the fact that people everywhere on this planet are equal. It's an interesting thing to do because we have thought about people of different origin, different color, different religion, and even different political parties as if they were wrong because they were different. Let's let go of all those beliefs. It's very difficult to do because if your mother said you need to know that the next door neighbor is a bad person because of the color of skin, you're going to believe that quite often most of your life unless somebody comes along and changes that into a new thought. Our parent church, the Universal Church of the Master, is a new thought church. That new thought is that we are all part of God's family. Whether you say Mother, Father, God, Creator, I am. We are all part of that family. And right now when there are so many things going on that we see on television or that we read in the newspaper or that we hear on the radio showing us that there people out there are different. Stop buying that and reestablishing a new thought rather than an old belief. I was lucky to have been raised by people who were very open, by people who loved me unconditionally and accepted everyone. Our house was open to people of all faiths, all colors, from different countries, from different economic status. Also, the governor of the state spent the night at our house one time after he'd come into town for a talk. It didn't make any difference whether it was the poor farmer next door with many, many children or whether it was the priest in the local church. My parents treated them the same. Isn't that a wonderful way to grow up? where you're not judging people, you're not making people wrong because of any perceived idea you had as a belief. Think about that. Have you at any time had somebody be prejudiced against you? What did you do about it? You felt hurt. You felt disent disentitled to anything. You felt that life wasn't fair because you know you're a good person. Let's see the goodness in everyone. It doesn't take that much. It just takes you finding out that there is that spark of goodness in everyone and helping them nourish it if they haven't started already. Now the only bias I have felt or a prejudice was about my weight. I've run into more fat shaming. People who say, Dottie, you'd be happy if you lost 50 pounds. The truth is I'm already happy. I've had doctors tell me, well, if you don't lose weight, blank, blank, blank is going to happen, whatever it was. They're still telling me that. I'm going to be 82 this year. And I'm still hearing doctors saying, well, if you don't lose weight, you're, you're, you're going to have problems. And it's a type of prejudice that's very difficult. Now, I could lose weight to please them. But what happened in the meantime? I wouldn't have been as comfortable with myself, and I'd have to buy new clothes. You know, think about it. 
but there is a prejudice. And sometimes we have people that have those built in prejudices because it just happens. Most of my doctors have been very thin doctors and they have that built in prejudice or a belief that came from the country of origin or their parents. So right now, think about what are those beliefs that you decided to believe growing up that might not be true? I had a very interesting background that my grandparents, who I lived with when I was very young, one was a devout Republican and one was a dedicated Democrat. So we always had that. But they had agreed that every night they wouldn't go to bed angry. So we could have them just roaring at each other. Now this was during the Second World War. And each one knew it should way it should be but yet they still loved each other they still accepted the good in each other and the positive but both of them my grandmother was from the south she was from missouri and she had some definite ideas about things think about that the, where people come from quite often gives them a different idea about things because they believe what their parents believe and what their grandparents believe. Quite often that stays with them until they get out of school or into college or out of college. Sometimes it never changes. But when what takes over is thought. Those thoughts that you have that are proven of what is. We now know that there is very little true DNA of, of pure heritage of one race. And as far back as they go, they all started out in Africa. Each one of us have a historical connection through our DNA with the continent of Africa. And yet we see people screaming at folks that have dark skin because they're not like us. When we talk about brotherhood and sisterhood, it's true. It's in our DNA. It's in our God language. Our God language is talking about love and peace and harmony. I said, please go on the chat room when I did the introduction today, today. Said, please go on the chat room and let us know, what are your beliefs? What are you believing in right now? And then stop and look and say, what is really true? There's truth in everything, but sometimes you have to mine it. It's very precious to find the truth and letting go of the belief that they are wrong and I'm always right, or they're bad and I'm always good. I had an interesting experience. My father was an attorney in a small town. And when we moved in there, he started talking to a couple of our friends and they were forming a chapter of the NAACP. And my dad was a very big man, very white. And he said, can I belong? And they said, sure. So he's listed as a charter member of the NAACP in Lancaster, California. At the same time, he had a client who was a member of the KKK. And somebody said, you can't do that. You can't believe in the equality of African-American people and represent the Ku Klux Klan. You just can't. My dad said, I believe everybody in the United States deserves a free trial. Isn't that what we're all fighting for right now? Is a freedom of the police, a freedom of, of the trial, a freedom of the judicial system? That's what we're looking for. But you can't say they're wrong 
because it's your belief. Every person that you meet has some of that wonderful good energy. It might be buried a bit, but look for it. Don't look at the their religion or the color of their skin or their disability or their gender. Because when you do, you completely ignore the goodness because your belief is one of those things is wrong or bad. We are seeing strides. I'm sure many of you have been watching the television and the news and we're delighted and amazed at how many different cultures, how many different colored people, colors of people are walking together. They all are there for the same thing. They want to have a peaceful resolution to things that have been criminalized. And what I mean by that is discrimination and prejudices have become criminalized. Let's get rid of the criminalization by loving. So if you meet somebody who's hysterical about their belief, don't tell them they're wrong. Listen to them. Because maybe in their belief, you're going to find a little bit of a nugget of truth and a little bit of really positive thinking that you can water. Just like a seed, you can water what it is that's deep within them. It's pure love. Remember, each one of you, whether you have a certificate that says you're a minister or not, is a minister on this planet. You're administering love to people, joy to people. You're also administering care, kindness, and consideration. So as we're going through this difficult time, every time you want to make somebody wrong on your belief, stop and look at it differently. Say, what do I truly think? What did I learn about that country of origin? Or what did I learn about that disease they're fighting? Or what did I learn about somebody who wants to be a different gender? What did I learn about it that's truth, not belief? As I mentioned earlier, the Easter Bunny, I'm sorry, that's a belief. Now you might have, might have found Easter eggs strewn around during that time. And those were representative of the goddess. So the people who think that their religion is based on something that's uniquely theirs and you're following the path of a certain person, don't look down on other people. Don't say they're wrong. Say, I'd like to learn more about it. My belief may be different than yours, but my thoughts and truth are really the same. So when you say to somebody, well, I believe you're saying this is what I was raised with. Well, this is what I brought to the table from my parents. Instead, why don't you say, I know. I know that you are perfect. I know that you're a child of God. And I know that all of the problems we have in our country right now are calming down. The political problems we have are going to be worked out. The financial problems we are going to be negotiating. Because I not only believe in things and think about things, I feel things. Many of you who are listening to me are spiritualists. You have a spiritual connection with other people, sometimes a spiritual connection to those who have gone before, or a spiritual connection to an angelic realm. Let them support you with your feelings 
your emotions as you look for that kernel of truth in every situation. This being sheltered in place has brought a lot of new in-depth thinking to people. A lot more people are reading spiritualist books. A lot more people are reading about politics and reading about the First Amendment and how it came about and what it stands for. Look into what freedoms you have. Those are your rights. Those are not beliefs. They're rights that you were guaranteed under the Constitution. Look into where you are, who you are, and how you got here. And you might be surprised that some of the beliefs you've been holding on to do not serve you. Let them go. I hear so many people saying, oh, the youth of today, they don't believe in the things I believe in. Hallelujah. Because some of the things you believed in weren't necessarily true. In the early 1970s, I remember an area of the town I was in where people, is, they were walking down the street and they saw a man of color walking towards them. They'd stare at him until he crossed the street because it was not considered okay for the, them to walk by them on the sidewalk. That's not that long ago. But some people still feel they have the right to tell other people how to feel about themselves by making them ashamed. That's not a right. That's an old fashioned belief. Everybody has a right to be walking on the same street. And everybody has a right to love who they want. And each one of you have that choice to let go of old time beliefs. Because I, I really appreciate what you think about and who you are. I'm not going to discriminate against people because they have old fashioned beliefs. In fact, some of them are pretty interesting. But don't use them to hurt other people. I'm so glad you could join us. And I'm so excited about looking at the chat room and seeing who has joined us. And now we're going to be having uh, some music. Isn't that fun? That's another thing. I'm a little bit discouraged in my life. I'm tone deaf. And I've had some people try and shame me in on that. And I just said, no, nope, you can't do that. I can listen to all music and think it's beautiful. Isn't that, that's a gift. Not something I need to apologize for. Thank you so much for joining us. And I'm looking forward to next week when we're going to have the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Reverend Joyce C. Brown. Oh, I'm wrong. I just, huh, Ms. Corky over here. We're going to have the wonderful Reverend Joan Stutes. And then we're going to have Joyce Brown talking about Father's Day. We have a great, great lineup of people coming up. If you want to give a talk at the Center for Creative Living, we'd love to have you. Call, phone number is area code 408-392-9090. And that's CCL headquarters. Call and say, I'd like to be put on your list of speakers. We want to hear what you stand for. We want to hear who you are. And we want to know that you are loved. And so it is. Bye now. Oh, my friends, we are at a crossroads in our lives as a nation, 
as a world, as individuals, as groups that have the potential to bring healing and hope for our world by bearing witness to and with each other. Every moment we give of compassionate listening to ourselves and to the people around us, we are building a bridge of healing and comfort and connection. This is powerful. And you know each and every one of you that you are a part of that woven connection. It means acknowledging and expressing all of our pain. Letting ourselves be vulnerable and crying. So I invite you to go into your heart and imagine that there is a flame of love, power, compassion, and light. And feel the winds of peace and healing reach out and fill up. body, reaching out to your body, reaching out to the world, the flame of your heart, like a candle flame, is intense and yet gentle. Believe, my friends, believe that you and I and all those around us can make a difference. And for this, we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the depth of your life, your pain and your strife, you flow a river into the light. You are a bridge that spans the horizon. You are a boat upon the ocean. You know where my dreams and memories hide. on the inside so rise to your destiny take this thank you as a memory you hold the future in your hands spread your wings across this land fly 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 spread your wings and fly, 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 fly. Spread your wings and fly. Your struggle brings me wherever you're breathing. Your choice to reach out and meet my need. compassion and true gentle care Ooh, I will always remember 
that you were there So rise to your destiny Take this thank you as a memory You hold the future in your hands Spread your wings across this land Fly, 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 fly Spread your wings and fly Fly, 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 fly Spread your wings and fly and all that I hold true I would not be here at all were it not for you so rise to your destiny take this thank you as a memory you hold the future in your hands spread your wings Cross the land, fly, 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 fly. Spread your wings and fly, 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 fly. Spread your wings and fly. Thank you for joining us for this celebration of faith and fellowship. We'll be back next Sunday. And for those of you, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can leave them in the comments section. If you appreciate this video and the work that the Center for Creative Living is doing, please press like on the video. You can share the video. And also, please subscribe, because that will help this community and the church grow. Remember, in these difficult and challenging times, the opportunity to give and support an organization that has done so much for the community is tremendously important. Please help the Center for Creative Living continue in the wonderful work that it does. We will make it through this. We will be stronger for it. Our faith will carry us. Be blessed, be safe, and have a wonderful week.